In this lesson, we will construct a confidence interval for P, the population proportion. Here's our problem. The community college in your town is having a difficult time accommodating parking for all of its 3,000 students. They want to start a campaign to promote carpooling, but before they do, they want to estimate the proportion of its student body, so we're estimating a proportion, that already carpools to school. They take a random sample of 130 students and find that 12 of the students carpool to school. We want to estimate the proportion of students carpooling to school with 90% confidence. We are estimating a prop population proportion, so what kind of confidence interval should we construct? We should construct the one proportion Z interval. Let's now define what P, our population proportion, is. Our population proportion P is the proportion of college students that carpool to school. We want to estimate that population proportion. We want to find the 90% confidence interval for P. Remember, confidence intervals are for population, per population parameters. We never use a sample statistic here. This quantity is always a population parameter. What is the form of the 90% confidence interval for P? We need the estimate for P, our point estimate, which is our sample proportion, plus or minus a critical value. We said it's going to be a Z interval, so for the one proportion Z interval, it is a Z critical value times the standard error of our estimate P hat, which is the square root of P hat times one minus P hat over N. Before constructing the confidence interval, we should check to make sure that all the conditions necessary to construct the interval are valid. So let's do that now. The conditions necessary for us to construct this confidence inter interval are our sample must be a simple random sample, n times p hat has to be greater than or equal to 10, and n times 1 minus p hat has to be greater than or equal to 10. This must be met so that we can use the normal approximation for our sampling distribution of p hat. And the third condition is that the size of our population has to be at least 10 times the size of our sample. That allows us to use this quantity as the estimate for our standard error of p hat. Do we have a simple random sample? Well, it says that a random sample of 130 students was taken. We will assume that that random sample was a simple random sample. Is n times p hat greater than or equal to 10 and n times 1 minus p hat greater than or equal to 10? Well, n is 130. p hat, there were 12 out of the 130 that said they carpool. So n times p hat is equal to 12. That's greater than or equal to 10. n times 1 minus p hat will be 130 times 118 over 130. This is 1 minus p hat. That equals 118. So that second condition is also met. Is the size of our population at least 10 times the size of our sample? Well, what is 10 times n? 10 times 130 is 1,300. 3,000 is the size of our population, and that is greater than 1,300, so our third condition is met. We can now construct our 90% confidence interval for P. We know what P hat is. It's 12 out of 130. We know what N is. That's 130. We still need to find our critical value for a 90% confidence interval. We need to go to a standard normal table to find our critical value. What percentile do we want to look up in our standard normal table to find our critical value for a 90% confidence interval? Well, with, if we are looking for a 90% confidence interval, we want 90% of the area of the normal curve to be in the middle. That leaves 10% for both tails. That leaves 5% for the lower tail and 5% for the upper tail. 
This value right here is the Z star critical value that we want for our 90% confidence interval. That corresponds to the 95th percentile. How much area is to the left of Z star? 90% plus 5%. It's the 95th percentile. We want to find inside our normal table, we want to look for 0.95. We see that that occurs approximately right there. At 1.65, at, at a Z value of 1.65, 95% of the area will be to the left of 1.65. So our critical value for a 90% confidence interval for this problem will be 1.65. So for our 90% confidence interval for P, we have P hat, which is 12 out of 130, plus or minus our Z critical value, which we just found was 1.65, times the square root of P hat, 12 over 130, times 1 minus P hat, 118 out of 130, all over N of 130. Calculating this, we find that this equals 0 0.050, up to 0 0.134. We have our 90% confidence interval. We want to write our confidence interval in an English statement. And the English statement is, I am 90% confident that the true proportion of college students currently carpooling to school is between 5% and 13.4%. Before leaving this problem, let's calculate on the calculator a confidence interval for a population proportion P. We go to STAT on the calculator and over to TESTS. We go down to the letter A one proportion Z interval. Hit enter. The only data you have to give it is the number of successes in your N trials and what confidence level you are calculating your confidence interval for. We had 12 successes out of a sample size of 130. We won a 90% confidence interval. Now we're ready to calculate. Hit calculate and we see that our confidence interval is 5% up to 13.4%. Our P hat, our estimate for the proportion of students that carpool to school is 9.2 percent. That was our P hat, 12 out of 130, and our sample size of 130. So using the calculator, the calculator will calculate the confidence interval for you. You just need to give it the number of successes out of the total sample size. And our problem for finding the confidence interval for a population proportion is complete.